the coordinating just functions. That doesn't need to, a swearing in as such. And I'll ask Mr Molino a question. Okay. So do you. James, when did, when did you decide that now was the time to call time on your political career by the end of this year? I mean, um, I've been thinking a lot about um, over, over a long period of time, in fact, you know, every, every four years, and I'm sure that's the case with all, all of my colleagues, every four years, you know, Megs and I would, would have a chat, are we, go, are we going again? Um, because you, you've got to do what's right for your family, most importantly. Um, what, what do you want to achieve? So I've, I've had that. Uh, I've had those thoughts and those discussions every every step of the way through my through my career, um, but over the last six or twelve months, I've been thinking more and more about it. And someone wise once said to me, uh, "When you come into politics, think of how you want to leave politics," um, and that stuck with me. That was a comment that was made more than uh, more than twenty years ago. Um, I just knew in my heart, um, I don't have the fuel in the tank for another term. I've certainly got the fuel in the tank uh, for the contest in November. Um, so it's over the, over the last six or 12 months. Mr Molino, you have looked at one, looked at one crucial detail, which is what's next. What are you planning to do after November? Yeah, that's, that's when I have my freak out moments because, you know, it's uh, one, one big door is closing and, uh, and I'll be opening a, a new door and have no idea what's on the other side. And uh, that's a little bit exciting for someone who's uh, been, uh, been in the public eye, really, for more than half my life, 20 years in the state parliament and almost six as a local councillor in Yarra Rangers. More than half my life I've had a public role, so um, I'll continue to find ways to serve the public, but in, uh, in a less obvious way than uh, what I'm doing right well, now. Unlike the very private, private sector role, you're possibly going to take advantage of the fact that there's a Labor government in Canberra and a Labor government here and a well-worn path from parliament to government appointments? Uh, Ra Rachel, <laughs> I have honestly not, not thought about what comes next. Um, other than, uh, you know, I'll be uh, spending a lot more time uh, with my kids, uh, supporting Megan's career. You know, her career is every bit as important and valued as mine. Um, so that's that's what I'll be focusing on in the, uh, in the short term. <laughs> I can certainly rule that out. James, you're leaving. I mean, the Mental Health and Wellbeing Act isn't really going to come into effect until I think it's next year, and I know. It's going to be a decade-long reform, but do you feel like you're leaving too early in regard to that reform, which you wanted to see? I know you spoke very personally about your cousin's experiences. Um, no, no, I don't think I'm um, leaving too early. I think the, the the way I saw my job um, in the period that I've been mental health minister is is to deliver the momentum in the early years of this 10-year reform. If you don't get those early years right. Um, we are not going to deliver the rebuilt mental health system that every Victorian wants to see. Um, and, there's, and there's three core foundations. Um, sustainable funding. Um, we put it in law. The other side have committed to cut $3.7 billion. Um, the legislative framework, um, I was just so proud to deliver uh, that bill this week. Um, and then thirdly, and most importantly, the workforce. There is no reform if you don't have a pipeline of mental health professionals, and we've funded and delivered two and a half thousand over the next few years. So I feel um, I've done my job, but it's absolutely appropriate. I go back to what I said in my statement and earlier. Renewal is important. Renewal is a good thing. It's a good thing for the government. It's a good thing for the state of Victoria. And, and I know, because I know so well the capacity and the talent of my colleagues, I know the next mental health minister. He's going to be an outstanding mental health minister because all of us are committed to mental health reform. In your statement alludes to all of the things that you've missed out on over the years, particularly with your family. Can you sort of walk us through the, I guess, the mental impact that politics has taken on you and your family's life? Um, I spoke from the heart in the, in the statement in terms of the impact that politics has on, on all of our families. Um, it has a disproportionate impact um, on, on our partners um, and, and on our kids. And it's in big and little ways. You know, it is the, it is the um, school productions that you might miss or the sporting events you might miss, those milestones um, that you might miss. But it's also, and I know that Wade spoke about this when he, um, when he retired from parliament, it's also the times when you're there, but you're not really there because you know, you're dealing with all the, all the pressures and the, the challenges um, that politics brings. 
Um, so for all of those reasons, there's not, there's not one single reason why I've come to this decision, but for all of those reasons, now, now is the time for me. Um, but uh, I'm just so excited for, um, for the opportunities because Dan is absolutely right. All of us come in as uh, younger, inexperienced members of parliament. We all rely on those opportunities in our careers. I've had my opportunities. Um, it is now time for others to get that opportunity. How do you 